There's a new source of feud between South Korea and Japan. The Japanese government is ramping up pressure on South Korean portal giant Naver as it reportedly seeks to seize management control of a joint venture running Line, the dominant messaging app in Japan. Now, this has sparked controversy here in Korea. But it is not the first time a government has weighed in on foreign companies or investment citing security risks. For more on Japan's action against Naver and the growing global trend of data protectionism, we now invite back the returning Professor Yang jun Sok, economics professor at Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, welcome back to the show. Happy to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you first provide us with an overview of the Japan neighbor friction? Why is a Japanese government pressuring neighbor to sell off its stake in the joint venture that runs Line? Okay. Uh, La- uh, Line is a uh, popular uh, messenger app that's used in Japan. It's used about uh, 90 million users. It's comparable to uh, Kakao Talk in Korea and Twitter and uh, Facebook in the U.S., It was created as a joint partnership with uh, SoftBank, which owned and operated Yahoo Japan and Korean Neighbor. And through mergers, uh, Neighbor and SoftBank currently jointly own Yahoo Japan and Line Messenger. Uh, Now, uh, why is Japan uh, pressuring uh, Neighbor to sell its portion of Line and Yahoo Japan? Well, while keeping out the forum management as a principle, uh, it cannot be completely ruled out. The uh, reason for pressure by the government uh, of Japan seems to be uh, data safety. The trigger for the current pressure for neighbor to sell its share of line ownership uh, was a hacking event that took place in November 2023 and then another which happened in 2024 where a net. Uh, where a, a line subcontractor that neighbor used was exposed to a malware, co- uh, malware code mm-hmm. and personal data for 130,000 Japanese users and 170,000 Korean users uh, were thought to be stolen. Mm-hmm. Now, put, there's a branch of Japanese government called Personal Security Committee, uh, and that committee found that security uh, procedures by neighbor was lacking, and it has required neighbor to uh, make fixes, which the uh, Japanese uh, government and this committee will monitor. But this was not the first problematic hack that neighbor had. A notable uh, incident took place in 2021 when a Chinese subcontractor leaked personal data that was in uh, Yahoo Japan and Line. And it was found that data for Japanese users were held in uh, servers which are located in Korea or cloud servers which were located in Korea. And that led to a controversy in Japan partially because Korea is known for having tough personal information protection laws, which require personal data for Koreans to be kept on servers located in Korea. Uh, So uh, the uh, Japanese users and Japanese government may have thought that perhaps data for Japanese citizens should be kept in data which is located in Japan. Uh Now, uh, while Korea does not pressure foreign companies to sell their shares in Korean companies if they have data leaks like this, Korean law keeps most personal data as well as some data which are thought to be important for Korea's national security, mostly on Korean located servers. This legal requirement has caused trade for this friction with the United States in the past, where the United States accused Koreans to be discriminatory toward foreign service providers, for, uh, not only for SNS but, uh, and messengers, but also for financial services, distribution mm-hmm. services, and also for big data companies, which use these data to form their big, da- uh, big data data sets. Um, national security-related provisions also do not allow Korean map data uh, to be located on servers outside Korea, at least for uh, very detailed maps. And that has created some uh, trade friction with the United States concerning navigation software and map applications like uh, Kakao and Naver Maps versus Google Maps. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, Koreans do have legal uh, requirements that uh, 
uh, makes an obligation for these companies to keep Korean data in Korea, and at least for the line in Japan, uh, Japanese data are being uh, located in Korean data, and I think that has the Japanese government upset. Uh, but uh, these type of things happen a lot in trade friction, uh, in trade policy. Mm. Uh, Korean and Japanese government emphasizes personal privacy and data safety when they're dealing with foreign companies. But then on the other side, uh, these governments also accuse the other side very often of discriminatory behavior, protecting their home country companies. So in a lot, in some sense, when you're dealing with trade policies, uh, you have a lot of hypocrisy, perhaps, <sighs> and that's occurring in these uh, information-related industries, especially concerning big data data sets. All right, especially considering that those data sets are quite pricey. We can't put an exact price on it, but we know that there's value there. So high stakes, maybe more uh, room for friction because both would want to keep a control of it. Uh, and as you've mentioned, Professor Young, it's not a one-up event. It's not an isolated case in this larger context too. So the bigger question becomes, what happens when foreign investment becomes also a security risk? The U.S. is finalizing steps to ban the Chinese app TikTok from operating in the country, but just to call it Chinese is probably oversimplified. This is just many ongoing wars between the U.S. and China, also over the internet and technology, citing national security risks. So what are your thoughts on this issue? Okay, well, there's two fronts on the TikTok case. The first deals with propaganda, and second deals with data privacy. Now, uh, on the front of propaganda, there has been studies comparing contents on TikTok versus contents on other comparable um, SNS outlets. And most of these studies seem to show that there's a uh, substantially less content on TikTok dealing with issues which are unfavorable to China or to the Chinese government, and there's more content relating to issues that uh, is favorable to the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not entirely clear whether this is something that's intentional or unintentional, but this has sparked fears that the Chinese government is using TikTok to influence public opinion and elections in the U.S. and the West. Now, uh, the U.S. Congress had similar concerns uh, with a lot of U.S. SNS companies like Twitter and Facebook being used by Russia, uh, but they are more concerned about TikTok because uh, it is perhaps directly, at least the uh, U.S. Congress argues that the uh, TikTok is owned directly, controlled more directly by the uh, Chinese government. Now, TikTok has a sister company, uh, Douyin, which is available only in China. So in China, you cannot ex- you cannot access TikTok, but you can only access Douyin, and Douyin apparently has contents which are very different mm. from TikTok. Uh, again, it's much favorable to Chinese uh, China and Chinese government, uh, but still, uh, TikTok is not directly accessible uh, from China. So that has concern, uh, created a lot of concerns about uh, whether uh, these SNS, especially TikTok, uh, is uh, affecting the U.S. through propaganda. And then second, TikTok gathers personal data on its users. By uh, That's not unusual. Uh, most uh, apps do uh, collect data, mm. uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Takao Talk, and those data are used to make these big data sets. Uh, but uh, apparently uh, these critics argue that TikTok gathers more data than most apps. Uh, and it's not clear how much more they gather, but still, uh, compared to even Facebook, which is notorious for gathering a lot of information, uh, TikTok apparently gathers more. Mm. Now, these problems are set to be worrisome because a substantial portion of TikTok may be owned by the Chinese government, and TikTok is in a position where Chinese government may be able to control content shown over TikTok. This is uh, this is uh, contradicted by uh, the uh, TikTok uh, officials. Uh, TikTok uh, is owned by a company called ByteDance, and at least according to ByteDance, uh, t- about 60% of ByteDance is owned by global institutional investors like uh, BlackRock and General uh, Atlantic. 
twenty uh, percent is owned by companies' founders, and twenty percent is owned by its employees, including Americans. Uh, but the twenty uh, percent owned by companies' founders and twenty percent owned by employees. A lot of them are Chinese. The uh, some of the uh, head, the uh, headquarters machinery uh, that's uh, located in China. So uh, that may be. Uh, subject to Japanese, uh, excuse me, Chinese laws and Mm -hmm. uh, orders by Chinese government. Uh, So that is what the uh, U.S. critics are uh, scared of uh, with TikTok. Now, uh, there's no evidence that shows that domestic firms or servers protect domestic data uh, better than foreign firms or uh, uh, servers which are located in uh, foreign countries, but Domestic firms are subject to laws and pressure of the domestic government. So I think these companies are getting more nervous about servers or information uh, that's held outside the uh, home countries. Uh, And both government and private companies want more private data for themselves, uh, for intelligence, for law enforcement, Mm -hmm. and for companies for marketing and establishing profitable databases as well as establishing big data databases. Mm -hmm. So uh, there has been a lot of conflict. It's not clear what should be the limit for these governments and private firms. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned in the last question, uh, some of the governments are getting somewhat uh, hypocritical, Mm -hmm. allowing something for themselves, which they would not uh, allow for other countries. All right. So which brings us naturally to our next question. Uh, what's being done in South Korea? Major economies are clearly heightening their scrutiny on foreign investment and foreign companies in the tech sector over data security concerns. So what regulations are in place here in South Korea, hypocritical or not? OK, well, Korea has very little mechanism for considering national security provisions in allowing, say, uh, foreign direct investment by foreign companies. United States has a uh, mechanism p- to review uh, private investment if they affect national uh, security or industries which deal with national security. Uh, it's called the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, the FIUS, and they stopped investments in places like ports because they were th- uh, was thought that even allies, if they own, say, port infrastructure, uh, it may uh, make... Uh, uh, port services more difficult uh, during times of conflict. Uh, but Korea has very little mechanism to review these type of uh, investment for national security purposes. That's partially because uh, since 1997 currency crisis, uh, Korea, uh, Korea is seeking more uh, foreign investment to create more jobs. Uh, so we tend to perhaps not be concerned as much with national security implications. Uh, But on the other hand, Korea is not entirely uh, defenseless. Uh, Korea is not entirely non-discriminatory. Korea does have a lot of laws in place to protect data privacy, uh, control capital flows, as well as scores of regulations on real estate transparency, construction, labor, uh, and so on, which... Uh, foreign investors argue it's discriminatory, but it's sometimes used to discriminate against foreign investment. Mm. Some, a lot of these laws and regulations deal with national security implications, like the uh, map that it, we talked about in the previous questions, mm. uh, and data security. As I said, Korea requires most personal data to be stored in Korean located servers. So Korea is not entirely defenseless. But we tend to use a different set of rules, more laws rather than reviews of investment. Uh, And there has been accusations that these laws are discriminatory toward foreign investors or foreign companies. Mm. And the next question becomes, uh, should uh, the government intervene when it comes to uh, these kinds of cases? The current government says it's in close discussion with neighbor regarding the Japanese government's recent moves. Uh, Seoul Foreign Ministry has previously issued a statement stressing that there should be no discriminatory measures against Korean companies. Do you think the government uh, should step up measures in support of neighbor and what kind of measures are needed? Okay, well, as I said, Korea does have this obsession with uh, having data located inside Seoul, 
or inside Korea, and that more and more foreign countries seem to be coming around to perhaps Korea's point of view. Uh, <laughs> but there's no real evidence that having uh, information within your own borders particularly improves Uh, security of this data. Uh So uh, that might be a sort of a false uh, front that you put up. Uh, Mm -hmm. But as far as backing neighbor is concerned, uh, well, uh, it wouldn't cost the Korean government uh, that much of anything to uh, support neighbor. And it might allow better leverage for international negotiations in uh, areas of uh, information sharing or uh, information location. Uh, So it might be better for Korea to uh, back a neighbor. The uh, trade friction, as I sort of indicated, is uh, fraught with these hypocritical government stances, which are often contradictory. It advocates one uh, position for domestic firms, uh, but when foreign firms try to do it, they take a uh, contradictory position. And Korea, well, it's not completely innocent of all that, but we tend to... uh, care more about consistency because we are a uh, country which trades more than most countries. Mm. But perhaps with the ongoing breakdown of uh, international trading rules and WTO, it may be advantageous for Korea to become more uh, strategically contradictory, let's say, (laughs) uh, to take a more uh, nationalist point of view, at least until uh, more countries can agree that all these uh, so-called strategically contradictory rules are uh, harming international trade and they can agree on sort of a uh, a rules uh, in the international trading game and investment game uh, so that we can have a more consistent set of rules. But Mm -hmm. we're not there yet. In fact, uh, those type of rules are actually getting weaker Uh, since the uh, U.S. Trump administration. Mm. Maybe we're in the process of rewriting those rules, but until then, strategic contradiction it is. Uh, Thank you so much, Professor Young, for your insights. We'll speak to you again next week. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.